All right, what's up everybody? So I just got back from the grocery store and I figured now would be a really good time to kind of take you through uh, what I bought, why I bought it, and how these different things might play into, you know, some things that you guys might be able to implement into your own nutrition. So um, yeah, so I guess let's just start with the water. So I bought this case of, it's just regular sparkling water. I also, I just went out. Anyway, I also bought uh, two pack, two four packs of gallons of water, so eight gallons of water. Uh, I could drink from the tap, but the as a lot of you know, the Susquehanna Valley is not the cleanest in terms of water and air quality, and I think Africa is just a little bit a little bit worse. So there's a lot of hard water and stuff. So I try to try to stay away from that. We do have a filter on it, but again, it's only gonna work so well. So I just stick with good, clean, pure water from Wegmans. Um, I'll buy it from spring water from uh, Walmart if I need to, doesn't really matter where you get it from. And then you can also add in different electrolytes. So that's the only thing with getting really clean water is it's lacking minerals. So just put the minerals back in with some electrolytes or one thing that a lot of my current clients know, I love Himalayan pink salt. Super good in terms of adding in it into your water, get enough sodium in. You also get trace amounts of other minerals as well, uh, but your best bet is to just go ahead and supplement it with an electrolyte supplement. And then outside of just regular water, I do love drinking sparkling water. Uh, this is just for me, my wife can't stand sparkling water, so she just drinks um, regular water and then she'll add in some different flavorings um, typically zero calorie. I think that's really all we, all we get is zero calorie uh, droplets. So yeah, she likes doing that. And then over here we have just a little uh, fuel for fire. Um, this is obviously not a paid ad. I don't, I've never been sponsored. Well, not true. I haven't sponsored, but it was, that was a while ago. Anyway, this is just a fuel for fire thing. This is uh, basically like baby food, but for adults has 10 grams of protein, it's gluten-free, no sugar added. It's basically protein powder mixed in with some pureed uh, fruit and maybe a little bit of, of uh, yeah, a little bit of uh, vegetables in there, a delicious blend of fruit and protein to fuel your day. So this, I got this just for my wife, Chelsea, uh, for, for her morning workouts. Sometimes she goes into the gym at like 5.30 in the morning and she gets lightheaded if she doesn't exercise, if she doesn't eat anything, so this will help her a lot. Over here we have what I consider more treat foods. Um, foods. Fruits are super important, but you don't wanna eat too much of them. So from digestive issues to just overloading your body with fructose, there is such thing as too much fruit. So I got some strawberries that I like to put in my yogurt. Um, I normally buy the organic. I like to buy the organic. Technically you should buy the organic, but I grabbed the wrong one today. Uh, reason is, is these are one of the Dirty Dozen. You wanna make sure that you get organic Dirty Dozen if you're not familiar with it. Um, basically, there's a list, uh, a never ending list of the new Dirty Dozen that comes out every year. You can find it on the internet. And basically, it's the ones that you should be buying organic because different farming companies put more in herbicides, insecticides, all the different sides that you can put on top of fruits and vegetables. Uh, they try to keep up to date as to what you should be buying organic. So normally I would buy, I would like to buy the organic strawberries. These are not, so I'm just gonna make sure I rinse them off really, really well. And then, you know, to each their own. Not a big deal, it's not gonna kill me going through one case of non-organic strawberries. Bananas, I try not to eat too many bananas. When I do eat bananas, I eat bananas. I might eat two at a time with some peanut butter. Uh, really good. Uh, I have some Lily's chocolate. So salted almond extra dark and sea salt extra dark. Uh, it's sweetened with stevia. So typically a bar of chocolate, a full bar might give you 500 to 600 calories. This only has 370. Um, I believe it does have other sugar alcohols in there. So actually no, it's just stevia extract. So, yep, just kidding, erythritol. So caution, be cautious of, of erythritol. It can give you some uh, digestive distress, uh, extra gassiness, stuff like that. So be leery. Treat this just like you would any other chocolate. You don't wanna go too nuts with it. You don't wanna smash a whole thing. Trust me, it's not fun. 
there is enough root and tall to kind of give you a stomach ache. But treat it just as, you know, break this up maybe into three. Uh, you know, there's two and a half servings per bar. So I might break this in half and have two and a quarter per serving, or excuse me, one and a quarter per serving. Or I might just have, you know, a strip at a time and try to get four servings out of this and just treat these as treat, you know, a little treat at the end of the day. Um, and I'll tell you in a second exactly how I'm going to actually utilize these throughout the, throughout the week, the coming week. So, uh, grape tomatoes, obviously it's a fruit, it's kind of the fruit section. Uh, it's not a treat, but you know, it's a fruit. Apples, apples are great, uh, high in fiber, low in sugar, and again, kind of moderate in sugar. Uh, really good, great to add in to a, you know, a pre-workout snack, something like that. Um, I think that's it for the sweet stuff. So like I said, I, I treat fruit more as like a, a treat. Uh, then over here we have the starches. So we have um, some zucchini. I love zucchini, my wife loves zucchini. Cucumbers for salads. Uh, I put cucumbers, tomatoes, and carrots typically in my salads. Um, if I'm feeling really fancy, I'll even add some raw cabbage, just a little bit. Uh, I have some baby arugula. I normally like to add in the higher quality greens into a spring mix. So higher quality greens would be things like spinach, arugula, um, collard greens, things that are not super common. When you think about going, like what are you gonna get in a salad at a restaurant? You're probably not gonna get arugula unless it's a really fancy restaurant. That salad's also gonna be a little bit more expensive. There, there's a reason for that. This is a little bit more expensive. Uh, this is, again, just like the strawberries, arugula is one of those things you wanna buy organic. Same thing with spring mix, anything that is sprayed frequently, and make sure you rinse it off. I did not look, this is a new brand that I purchased. It does not say that it's pre-washed, but that's not a big deal. I will rinse it before I eat it. So anything that might still be on it is gonna get rinsed off. Again, it's organic, so technically speaking, they have to be a little more cautious with the different things that you can use. So it's gonna be marginally better than something that is not organic. Okay, then over here we have organic uh, russet potatoes. My wife prefers white potatoes. She hates sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes, so I got myself some organic sweet potatoes. Um, I love replacing uh, salads or, or like spring mix and stuff with warm cabbage. It sounds weird, but I will chop this up, you know, maybe like a quarter of this real fine, saute it up real quick so it gets a little bit soggy, but still kind of crispy and throw in some tomatoes, carrots, you know, whatever you want, and a bunch of meat, oh, it's super good. I'll cook it with some avocado oil and you're good to go. Over here we have carrots, whole carrots. Um, honestly, these are just, it's so, when you're buying organic, it's so much easier, uh, excuse me, it's so much cheaper to buy uh, the whole product rather than getting the pre-made stuff. You can get like, you know, things like this, but it's like carrots or zucchini or stuff that's already cut up, you're gonna spend three, four, five dollars more per package um, if you do that. So that starts to get pricey. Um, over here we have a little more odds and ends stuff, more canned goods and proteins. I think I covered everything here. Yep, so then this is just a cooking spray. It's an avocado oil. This is definitely gonna be a little bit more pricey than canola oil, but canola oil is a very, very, very low quality uh, fatty acid or a fat source. So going with something like an avocado spray is one, you're gonna be using less fat. That's my dog needing to go to the bathroom. So I'll let him out in a second. He has a button that he's just now learning to use, which is pretty cool. So avocado oil spray, really good. Um, big thing on here is the, it says that the smoke point is 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really good. Something like an olive oil, which I have a, a little thing of olive oil over there, uh, the smoke point is a lot lower. So you don't wanna, realistically, you don't wanna cook with uh, olive oil. You wanna stick with cooking with avocado oil, uh, ghee, which is just unclarified butter. Um, what are some other oils you can cook with? I'm drawing a blank. The big ones are, oh, coconut oil. Coconut oil, avocado oil, and ghee. Three really, really good fats that you can cook, sear meat with, do all sorts of really, really good stuff. So this is a good staple here. Uh, kimchi. Fermented foods are really good if you've never to eaten, cons consistently eaten fermented foods before. Be cautious with how much you do at a time, especially if it's spicy. Uh, this is spicy kimchi. So I'll start with, I haven't had kimchi for a while or consistently taken in 
uh, fermented foods for a while. So I'll probably start with just like a tablespoon, maybe maybe a half tablespoon for a week, up into a tablespoon, maybe two or three as I go on. Uh, fermented foods are really, really good for digestion. So definitely start adding that into your diet. Uh, my wife loves tuna. So I bought a big pack of tuna. We normally get the albacore, but I have been reading a little bit of different, uh, different fishes have different omega-3 profiles. So it's good to change it up and not just always stick with the same uh, omega, same uh, tuna source. So there's a lot of you know misnomer and misconceptions around tuna and fish and what should be wild caught and what should not. Unfortunately, when we're talking about resource allocation, which is something I'll probably talk about in a later video, is buying stuff that's wild caught might be better for you, but it's not necessarily better for the environment. It's not better for the animals themselves. So there is a documentary on Netflix. I can't remember what it's called, but it's really, really good. It started that starts out about whaling and gets into whole other, whole other stuff. So just because it says it's wild caught does not mean it's good for the environment. So if we're focusing in on the actual nutrient profile specifically, rather than the more uh, moral or ethical reasons to purchase things, go with uh, variety. You know, you're gonna be utilizing different types of sources. So you're not gonna put, necessarily maybe not put too much strain on one aspect or the other. Again, uh, I think my choice to purchase something is gonna be fairly negligible in terms of the impact. I think stuff like that needs to come more from a governmental uh, stace, uh, governmental stance as to what is allowed versus not allowed. So long story short, tuna is good for you. Change it up every now and again. If you normally go albacore, go yellow fin, go blue fin or whatever it is, and just change it up. So she likes that. I like sardines. Speaking of nutrient value, uh, sardines are great because these have 1500 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids. So if you have a lot of money resources, you could afford to eat you know, these things every single day and essentially get the amount of omega-3 fatty acids you need in a day. I try to eat three or four a week. Um, so just to touch on this idea of, of resource allocation, um, I'll, like I said, I'll hit on a, a much more in-depth video later on, but basically you have money, time, and energy. You want to use all three appropriately for your training and your nutrition endeavors. So if you have greater resources, monetary resources, great, do more. If you don't, you have to mitigate the risk and mitigate the damage, potential damage of not getting certain things in and just do your best with what you've got. Find the sources that are going to be a little bit less uh, mainstream. Not everybody eats sardines, but it's going to come out a lot cheaper and a lot higher quality rather than buying a bunch of, you know, omega-3 fish oils or something like that, especially when we're talking about quality. So that's a good source that I like to eat. I already went over the starches. And then last but not least, we have protein, all right? I like to buy the family size packs of protein. So this one is pork tenderloin, pretty lean. Uh, I think the macros are, macros are really good. They don't have them on here, but I know it's one of the leaner proteins, uh, leaner pork cuts that you can get. And underneath is a family size chicken breast. Okay, I like Wegmans chicken breast, it's not organic. The breasts are still kind of big, but they're significantly smaller than say Walmart chicken breast. Uh, be cautious when it comes to chicken breast because they will pump them with saline. Uh, they have, I think they have a certain margin that they're allowed to have inside of the breast. Uh, the reason why they get away with this is they have to put some sort of a salt water as a sort of a preservative aspect. So it has a longer shelf life, even though it's a raw product. Uh, what people will do is they will actually pump it. Companies will pump the chicken breasts with saline to plump them up. So you're literally paying more per, per pound for just salt water. It's really jacked up. So pay attention to the size of the breasts that you're purchasing. Wegmans is good if you live in the Lancaster County area. Uh, other ones you can get, you can get, you know, organic. But like I said, the big thing is just look at the size of the breasts themselves. That's pretty, pretty straightforward way to uh, make sure you're getting the most out of your protein. 
So that's it, guys. I mean, this is pretty much what I will eat in a day. And then, you know, really long story short, the way I'm going to do is what I'm going to do in terms of planning all of this into my meals. I like to allocate specific calories for the treats that I want to eat. So for instance, I'm probably going to eat both of these over the course of this week. So what I like to do and what I teach my clients to do in my nutrition method, the, and this is a level two technique. So one of the techniques that I use is called calorie allocation. So basically what we have is we have 360 calories in this, 370 calories in this. Instead of having to track every single little bit of calories that I eat on a day-to-day -day basis, what I focus on is I focus on the weekly aspect of how many calories do I wanna get in, do I need to get in throughout the entire week. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these up, I'm gonna deduct it from my total, right? So let's say I need to eat 2,000 calories a day, 14,000 calories a week to accomplish my goal. You know, for me, a 2,000 calorie is a very severe caloric deficit. So obviously that would be specifically trying to lose body fat. So 360, 370, so that's what? I'm terrible at math, 130, so 730 calories. I would take 14,000, deduct 730. That is now my new calorie goal for the week. So whatever that is, 13,270, right? So I'm gonna take 13,270, divide by seven, because there's seven days in the week. That's my new calorie goal. Pretty straightforward, guys. If you have treats that you like to eat on a regular basis, but you just get tired of tracking them all the time, uh, stop tracking them all the time. I'm gonna eat these two whole things over the course of this week. The calories are the same, so what does it matter if I eat them all on one day, break it up evenly throughout the day, or if I eat them all in one day? Big deal, I'm still taking in the calories, and as long as those calories are allocated for, or accounted for, you're good, right? Don't make nutrition complicated, guys. It's really not that hard. So let me know if you have any questions down below. And yeah, I hope this helps. And try some of these different things. Try the calorie allocation uh, in your own nutrition. Okay, have a great rest of your day.